We've, had, we've grappled with what the next line of therapy is for someone who has failed checkpoint inhibition. Uh, whether uh, checkpoint inhibition has failed them in a primary refractory or a subsequent resistant fashion. And currently, our standards are to go to other checkpoint uh, combinations or targeted therapy. But what's really known is the, the highest response rates are seen with adoptive T-cell therapy in the high 30s. There's durability. The data presented in multiple uh, forums shows that even patients that are primary uh, resistant respond to this therapy, and there's durability. The promise of this therapy is that it's somewhat bespoke, utilizing your own tumor, and again, uh, those uh, because your tumor has all of your tumor-associated antigens, uh, and those T cells should be the strongest T cells to mount a response. Um, what we see here is a therapy that has multiple benefits. One, it's, en it's engaging the T cell itself, and these are uh, part of the reasons why we don't get the optimal response that we want. Number two, it's a one-time one therapy that can give you durable benefit without needing to redose. Um, this in multiple different parts of the initial IOVANCE trial has shown uh, response rates, rapid response, durable response, and manageable toxicities. The toxicities of this regimen really are based on the initial um, lymphodepletion and the IL-2. Uh, what it also sets is a precedent that these T-cell therapies, whether they be CAR-T, TIL, some type of NK or other, it has a role in immunotherapeutics post-checkpoint inhibitor failure. So I look forward uh, to the BLA being approved and bringing this therapy to our patients.